talking. So maybe maybe I do have something that um, that needs to be said, or you know, because I always find that when I just shut up long enough to listen, that's when God really talks to me. And I mean, I'm I'm hearing you guys. Hearing <laughs> everybody that has said anything. I've, I've been replaying what you're saying, and I'm like, I was just thinking about that last week. Or I was just talking about clarity, focus, family, what you put into your body. Your input changes your outcome. And I'm like, how long have they known all this stuff? And where have I been? How come I didn't know any of this? So um, I'm going to share just a little bit of my story. And I, I really want to hear more about like what what you're doing and what how how what you're learning is affecting your lives and, and make, helping you make the change changes because I'm always looking and now even more so looking for changes not just for me but for my whole family I mean Joe Jarbo my husband he's my rock mm -hmm. I met Joe in 2008 January 5th 2008 at 1:45 yeah, <laughs> <laughs> 2008, and I was diagnosed in June of 2008. Mm. June. So, I mean, we had just really met and started our our dating, and I fell in love with him the day that I met him. For, and I'm going to tell you this real quick story just because you can we'll have a little bit more of insight as to who we are. Um, there were three things that happened the day that I met Joe. He started getting weepy, which he's crying. <laughs> He started, we, he started getting teary-eyed in, in, in our date um, when he started talking about his mom and dad. He lost his mom to cancer, lung cancer, and then that was years ago. And then recently he lost his dad, and he started getting weepy. And I'm like, oh, he's got the emotional gene. I like that. <laughs> and then the second thing that happened was he was talking about, um, no, um, his ex-wife, was um, was over at the house and we were talking and having coffee and stuff and she said you know Joe was so sweet and I said well I know I really do know that mm -hmm. and she said well let me tell you something that he did and she said I it was in the springtime and I had put on a couple of pounds over the winter and um, Joe she said and Joe just looked at me and he said that's not that's not that. That's just your fur coat. <laughs> winter coat. Winter coat. That's just your winter coat. And I'm like, he's so sweet. That's just like such the compassion. And then the third thing was when um, I saw him take um, their dog, Tutu, outside to go to the bathroom. <coughs> it was raining. It was raining cats and dogs. And here's Joe standing out there with the umbrella here. He's getting soaked and Tutu's going to the bathroom. And I'm like, He's mine forever. <laughs> so I was diagnosed in June of 2008. And um, I wasn't, I, I really, I don't know if I just kind of shut down and just said, okay, God, I know this is not my plan. I did not plan to do this. So this must be your plan. If this is your plan, then you're going to help me do something crazy with it because he knows my personality. I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. And I am wide open, and anybody who knows me knows that. And mm -hmm. that's just my natural personality. I learned not to hide that because mm -hmm. then the people who love me for me will just come forward and be with me and embrace me the way that I am. And so, you know, it's all about my, my whole journey <laughs> through this is about not covering things up and not being ashamed of things, but in opening them up because somebody out here needs to hear something that I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, I've got a couple of other funny little stories. What, what really helped me get through all of this is, um, the first thing is resigning it to God. I, I, gave, I gave it up and I said, you know, again, it's not my plan, it's your plan. So I can't wait to see what you're going to do with this. <laughs> and being open to the possibilities and um, not being afraid. I mean, I was, I, I was never, ever afraid. And people would ask me, well, Aren't you afraid? I'm like, well, am I, why would I be afraid? What am I afraid of? I mean, it's not something that I have any control over at all. Mm. Now, looking back now, I have control over from now on. Mm -hmm. But I don't. I didn't have, you know, because I was back, stuck back in the I don't know what I don't know. Okay, when you don't know what you don't know, 
you can't go where it is you should go because you don't know to go there. So as long as I was living in the land of I don't know, I was just going to continue to get more of what I didn't want. So I stopped and I thought, okay, well, I'm going to, I want to move to a different direction and just kind of taking a step back. Coincidence is what, what seems to be a coincidence is a God, God wink. You guys are all familiar with God winks. Um, and being aware and more present in the moment and, and when I'm listening to you and I'm thinking, this is a God wink. I'm supposed to hear this. What am I supposed to do with this? I don't have to know everything. I don't have to know how or I don't have to know exactly what's going to happen. But I do know that I have connected with some amazing women tonight. And I'm, I, I, we've, got work, we've got work to do. We've got, work, we've got some fun work to do. I'm telling you. I, I just, I, and, and the inspiration, you guys have just all inspired me so much. And when, I met when at the first, was it Ellie's Closet? What was that? I met her and I thought, she's got something good going on. I don't know what she's got going on, but I'll never forget, she delivered my first package to my house. And I'm like, she makes deliveries? She's delivering this deodorant to me? <laughs> and I used to buy this stuff at like six and eight at a time, and I'd give my, all my sisters, they all use it. So now, so I'm thinking, you said that you've got people who buy, who buy it six at a time. I'm like, i got to start doing that, because I like to give things away. So, did I tell you I had ADD? <laughs> That's all, it's all like fun. Okay, I'm going to wrap up with just a real quick story. <laughs> See, I knew you'd love it. Okay, I'm going to tell a real funny story about my little niece, Hannah, who was one of my rocks during my entire process. Hannah is my, now she's 12 years old, and she was my niece. She's my niece. Well, I, I spent a lot of time with her, and... Um, she would come over to the house all the time and bring me food and bring me flowers and cards and they made posters and stuff and it's like, you know, these kind of little sweet things that heal you when you're going through all the junk. So, um, they had this big dog and this dog had all kinds of, um, it, it's a poodle and so it gets matted in their hair and, and she, we were sitting outside and we were combing this dog and had all, all of these little sticker burrs in the hair. Well, Hannah was standing on one step up over me, and this, I was bald. I never wore a wig. So, and I could feel Hannah's breathing on, on my head, and I'm thinking, that's Hannah's little hot breath. <laughs> and it was just kind of sweet. And she's, she looks over and she says, Jan, can I comb your hair? And I said, Hannah, I don't have any hair. She says, you have stems. Yeah. And so now the name of my book, I'm writing a book, and you guys have inspired me to do this too. I'm writing my book, and it's going to be called Stems. Yeah. I cannot wait to get into your yeah. lives some more and find out more about you. And I also want to um, thank Sam Strickland, who, Sam was my, well, she still is my physical therapist, but I got to tell you, I still do this in the shower. <laughs> Sam taught me to do this in the shower. <laughs> Little circles around the walls. Yeah, because Sam is amazing. So anyway, thank you so much for letting me be a part of this. survivors from Southern Maryland. I, and I brought a few of these <coughs> magazines. Awesome. So, um, 